Hi, my name is Avril Sorter and you're watching a course on how to conduct a Cisco Unified Wireless Site Survey. So in this first lesson, we're going to set the scene for you and talk about how you get started with this course. So this lesson is actually quite short. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about myself and so you'll know a little bit about the person that you're going to be listening to for several, several hours. And then I'm going to talk about the course itself and then how you can get going in using this course material. So let me first tell you a little bit about myself. You might detect a slight British accent. So I was born in England and I was educated in England. And so I got my PhD in engineering from the University of Reading. And once I'd finished that, I went off like many British people do, off to the colonies, and I ended up in Australia. And in Australia, I worked for IBM. And in IBM, I didn't work so much on the computer side. I worked on the networking side. And so I worked on things like X25 and SNA, if you remember that protocol, and Frame Relay. And then I was fortunate enough to join Motorola. And I actually joined Motorola in England. And I worked on the very first GSM phone calls, the very first CDMA phone calls. So I've come with a very strong cellular background. And what happened is that Motorola relocated me over to the States, which is now where I live. And when I relocated, what I started to work on was wireless LANs. And I'm going back to 1992, before Wi-Fi existed. And so I worked on some of the proprietary wireless LANs going way back when, that actually, back then, they worked in the 18 gigahertz band. And so quite very different from what we have today. And then I started to work on the wireless LAN that you see today, the Wi-Fi networks. And I eventually ended up in California, and I started to teach at Cisco. And I've been teaching wireless LANs at Cisco since the late 90s, and I continue to teach with them. And so it's really fascinating to sort of work with Cisco, not only on their products, but also with their engineers that are actually developing the future products as well. And then uh, when we look at what I do now is that I really focus very much in on developing content, sharing that expertise, sharing that wireless knowledge um, in many different formats, but video like we're doing today, but also instructor-led. And you'll see my name in papers on wireless articles and a variety of other subjects as well in the medium as well. So let's first talk about the intent of this course. You know, one of the things that you'll want to do is you'll be looking at getting yourself certified. And this certification is a specialized certification, so it's actually quite difficult to get and to actually qualify for. And there's many different aspects of it. And so we're going to go through all of those through this course and help you prepare for that certification. However, at the same time, in order to do a site survey, you can't do that without some basic understanding of how wireless works. And so we've put in this course some really, here's how wireless works. So you can kind of get an intuitive sense because there's nothing worse than dealing with somebody who knows what to measure and knows where to put the access point but doesn't really understand what's going on. Because then when something happens, like they see something that's unusual, they don't really know how to deal with it. So what we try to do here is to set that foundation so you can really understand wireless. So then it gives you that foundation to move on and do the site survey. And in company, not only with the theory, we've also tried to put in here a lot of examples that you can really try yourself. And you have to get the equipment. You have to touch the stuff. You have to get out there and do site surveys. Go with somebody who already does it. Do one at your home. Do one for your friend. But get out there and actually work with this stuff. Because the more you work with it, the more you'll experience the oddities of wireless. Because there's a reason why people call it a black magic art. It's because you get surprised and delighted all the time. And so play with it, because that's what you're going to find out. So on this slide, we've captured the most common questions we get on this course. And I want to make sure that you have the answers for this before we start. So the first one is, 
is this course following the course objectives that Cisco outline in order for you to get your certification? Well, the answer is yes, we are covering all of the objectives. Are we doing them in the same order? No. What we wanted to do was to really take you through an order that would make sense for how you actually do the site survey, starting with some fundamentals of how wireless works, going into understanding your customer needs, doing a layer one site survey, doing a layer two, and then into the final delivery of your customer. So you'll have all of the subjects covered, just they'll be in a different order. Now, can you jump around in this course? So if you don't have a background in wireless and you don't have prior experience of doing a site survey, I strongly recommend you begin at the beginning and work your way through and practice as you're going, but start at the beginning and finish at the end. If you have some experience and you kind of say, well, I want to understand perhaps how Cisco's recommending how to do this, how does my experience compare with this? then I think it's okay to look at the pieces that you want to study and become more familiar with. If you're doing the certification exam, please make sure you listen to the entirety of this course. Don't assume that you can just brush up on pieces and go and take this exam. You really need to listen to it from end to end. So I really have two words of wisdom for you when you're doing this course, and that is, Try not to go from the beginning to the end, just listening, but actually touch the equipment, practice with it. Because as you're going through the course, you need to be building on their expertise. You cannot just listen, you have to touch the radio, you have to touch the equipment. It'll make much more intuitive sense as we're going through and you start to understand the later pieces. The other words of wisdom for you, and this not only for the course, but just in life in general when you're doing site surveys, is look for the unusual and try to explain it. Because really, wireless is not a black art. It really, everything can be understood. And if you really want to get really good at doing site surveys, is getting the skill set to actually explain those unusual situations. When you see a piece of interference that doesn't make sense, a signal that's making interference that you just have never seen before. That's where it can get really exciting and that's when you'll build your foundation. And once you've seen all those unusual things, there won't be a site survey that you can't do. So play with this stuff, both through the course and afterwards. So let's now take a look at what the course covers. And we've got two slides because we've got so much information here for you. So the first one, well, we're doing this and we're just about to wrap up because we've talked about how you get going with this course itself. Then we're going to get into those fundamentals that I talked about. We're going to talk about how radio works. You know, we're going to talk about what happens when your signal goes over the air. Great things like modulation and coding. It's just tremendous fun about the fundamentals of radio itself. Once we've done that, you need to understand the rules and regulations of how to deploy a wireless network. Wireless may be unlicensed, but that doesn't mean it's not regulated. So you need to understand the regulations and where to look for information about those regulations. You also need to understand about the equipment itself, because different equipment, you know, it might be suitable for outdoors or indoors, you might have different antennas, so you need to understand how to explain as the antennas and access points that you're looking at and you're going to be deploying in the network. Then we're going to get into those antennas and perhaps it's one of my favorite sections because there's so much fun, the things you can do with antennas, how you can change the coverage, how you change how users can actually connect. And so really important to understand the differences of antennas. Then we get really going into what Cisco really needs you to understand and that is how to understand your customer needs. Because depending on those needs, how you do your site survey is going to change absolutely night to day. It's completely different depending on your customer's needs. You know, do they want to do multimedia type things? Are they doing voice? You know, do they have really heavy traffic going across the network? So you need to understand that. Then we're going to talk about the different survey models that Cisco has defined. And you know, the 
different survey models for things like voice, location services, etc. So really fascinating to distinguish between different types of models you can do on the wireless side. Then we're going to get into two parts, and you'll see understanding and conducting a predictive site survey. So understanding is basically going to give you the theory, you know, that you need to understand, and then we're actually going to actually do a demo and look at actually doing a predictive site survey. And we're going to use Cisco tools for doing that site survey. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say, now we understand what the customer needs are, how do we prepare ourselves to actually go out and do a site survey? What are the tools I need to take? What are the information that I need to have? So we'll talk about that, and that's really very important. If you don't prepare well, you will go out on your customer site, and you won't be ready to do the site survey, and your customer will be incredibly frustrated. So preparation is absolutely critical. Then we're going to do, much like we did with the predictive, we're going to have one lesson on understanding and one lesson on conducting the layer one site survey. So we're theory and then the doing. And so again, when we're doing the conducting, we're going to be using the Cisco tools again to do that. And again, remember what I told you earlier, remember to get that hands-on practice as we're going through this. Then we're going to go up a layer. So we're going to come away from the physical layer and start talking about the layer two, which is when we talk about placing our access points, where we're physically going to put them. And the same structure, we're going to have a lesson on understanding the theory and then a lesson on doing. So you get the theory and the practice coupled together. Once we've done that, we kind of know where we're going to put our access points, but we now need to know what happens behind that. So we need to start talking about the infrastructure requirements and how do you assess what you need beyond the access point to connect that to the wired network. Once we've got that, we've got our whole proposal together. Customer's going to go out there and deploy it based on our wonderful prediction of what they need. And of course, what can happen between when we did our original site survey and when it actually gets deployed, can actually, things can happen there. You know, the installation may not be quite how we specified it. Customer may have brought some new equipment. All sorts of things can happen. So we need to go out and verify that that wireless LAN actually meets the customer's requirements. So we kind of loop back in and say, yes, we got it right, or no, we need to tweak these things and adjust them. And so we need to do that and then deliver that to our customer as a final conclusion of our site survey. Then we've got a couple of short lessons just like this one where we're going to talk about how you can prepare yourself to actually do that exam, that certification exam. And we're going to make sure that you're ready and hit that with some success. So then we're going to wrap up with some next steps to help you close on this course.